I got this overly inflated balloon animal. This heavy ass Ricky Martin wannabe. This poha, poha china. I will be waiting for Adesanya, the skinny claw Adesanya. I want my chance to prove I am their champion. I don't like this guy, this Israel guy. I want to rearrange his face. Trust me, when I'm done with him, he'll really look like Ricky Martin. Botched. Costa, living la vida Costa. I'll see you soon, boy. Of course, Adesanya looks incredible lately. He's fucking awesome. He's what was his last fight? Oh, oh, Yo Romero. Okay, that wasn't. It was kind of one he'll forget. Yo Romero and Izzy Adesanya. Listen, this was not the fight we expected. This one laid an egg. This one is the cure for insomnia. I thought that Paulo Costa's reaction to the main event, the lackluster main event of Yoel Romero and Izzy Adesanya was very interesting. That fight was a fight. I'm sad to add that fight. But he's sad about this. He's sad as a middleweight, as a top middleweight, as somebody who cares about the middleweight division. He is sad that they now get a little bit of a black eye from having a fight that wasn't what we expected. The Sina is afraid. He's afraid to fight against big guys, against powerful guys. Izzy's a little annoyed that everyone jumped off his bandwagon after the Romero fight. I mean, we forget last year, arguably the fighter of the year, incredible performance against Robert Whitaker, right? And the fight great. of the year against Kelvin Gaslam. The Anderson fight was fun. And then all of a sudden the guy has one, you know, substandard fight. Everyone's like, oh, he's a bum, he's a bum, he's a bum. This is the guy just standing there doing this. Yeah, what's that? Right. What's that? What do I have to do with that? You, it takes two to tango. Right. Like. What am I supposed to do with that? Is that Paolo Costa will be next and, and it'll be a very... I know he's going to bring the fight. That Poha is going to bring the fight, so I'm looking forward to that, definitely. I will destroy him. I will hit him so badly. He will cry inside the cage. I, I predict that's fight of the year. Fight of the year. Costa's got the power. Israel's got the technique. He's definitely the more capable flashy a striker he's got more steady, but, but the power of Costa and the chin of Costa and he's going to go forward he, he's not going to do he's what Romero monster. did he's yeah. a fucking monster he, he just fucking goes forward like a madman swinging wild heavy shots we should be praising heaps on Paulo Costa because that, that guy's scary he's fucking terrifying that guy's the future he's, he's legit all he does is train he goes this guy doesn't party he doesn't around he's just concentrating on measuring his food and training so you would never believe that Johnny Hendricks was a former world champion if you saw the way the eraser beat the shit out of him Paulo Costa is that a tougher challenge for you than Robert Whitaker or do you think fuck no and uh, when I go inside the cage I will not wait for him I will go inside and hit him and hit him very badly And look at me, oh, he's so skinny, bro. He's so, I'm gonna break his face, bro. I'm gonna break him. He got no power, bro. Well, I don't need power. Everyone has power. I have precision. This guy is a chameleon. He is a chameleon. He, he, can, he cannot defeat me. The fight is very special. I can't think of a rivalry within the middleweight division that I've seen quite like this one. This is extremely personal. And this is not two guys who happen to be great, who happen to have scary and unique skill sets that are intimidating and impressive and undefeated, willing to fight each other. That's what you'll see a lot. And should the recipe and the concoction that I just laid out be what's gonna take place, you got something very special to watch. You know, so you got the technician against the brawler, you got the faster guy against the stronger guy. It's a fucking great matchup. Somebody's O has to go. There is no other fight for the 185 pound title that we want to see, right? This is the fight. Like, there's no debate. They want the fight, we want the fight. I love that about it. I think this is one of the most exciting fights the UFC can make. The aesthetic of it, like, I'm this skinny person, this little frail kid that everyone looks at and then he looks like the perfect antagonist. He's big, bulky, juice to the pink hills and he's gonna 
he's a marauder. He's a guy that beats everyone on the fence. So when I come in there with some Bruce Lee shit, come on. It's gonna be, oh my God, wow. He beat that big muscle boy. Oh, like the casuals are gonna feed off it. And that's just, I love that. Cause my story, right? You can't just have it like going good and going great. In a story, you need a dip, you need a bit of a valley when things go shit. And that was me for my last fight. I was a dip. And now this is the rise back. What better antagonist than this guy who was undefeated, KO artist. Um, he looks the way he does, you know, ballooned up. And I'm just, it's like David and Goliath. And I f this guy up. It just, it, it's spectacular as, you know, as they would say, someone's always got to go. Yeah, it's, it's a beautifully set up story. Yeah, it's a beautifully set up story. You couldn't write the shit, you could, but it's real. Israel. Adesanya is nothing. Adesanya is the most shameful champion I have seen ever. He just run. He's nothing, he's nothing. He's scared. Paulo Costa just wants this fight so bad. Yeah, Paulo Costa, after the fight, tried to rush the cage with like his manager or something. Security had to come and throw him out. He went crazy and jumped over the gate and was going crazy. We, 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 we threw him out, um, you know, and I just had to calm those guys down in the back. You know, he wants this fight so bad. That fight's going to be ridiculous because Paulo Costa will move forward. He will not stop punching. He's going to throw big shots and try to knock him out. When you have Paulo Acosta, who is less dynamic but equally as intimidating, who, does, who makes up for some of those unusual techniques with good raw power, is the power and the forward motion and the cutting off of the ring of Paulo going to simply overwhelm Adesanya, or is Adesanya going to move around and touch him up? But I mean, that is a fascinating match to the highest of levels. These guys are so completely different, and the only thing that they share in common is they cannot wait to fight. I've had over 100 fights in my lifetime. I've had over 80 kickboxing fights. And this guy's going to actually come forward and try and f*** with me. He's too emotional, and already I know how that fight's going to go. I'm going to sleep that guy. He's a guy that I've seen. I've had a lot of kickboxing fights. His reach... His arms, when he lets it down, reaches his waist, you know, I I'll pick him apart. He's a guy that I'll definitely jab, pick apart, catch him, and then knock him out. I will raise you. I think that Israel Adesanya is a massive star, as you see. Israel Adesanya is, is just one of those guys that now I watch him and I feel like I can feel almost like the star radiate off of him. But Paulo Costa is as dangerous a fighter as anyone can hope for and you know when I look at the matchup I know that Izzy likes to counter right mm. that's why the Romero fight was so bad both of them were waiting for chances to counter Ca Paulo Costa will give him those opportunities because Paulo Costa is not going to stand back with him he's gonna go after him he's gonna fight him with so much pressure so much forward pressure that Izzy will have his chances to find those counter opportunities the problem with that is no one's been able to stop Paulo Costa from fighting in the exact way that he wants to. Paulo Costa needs to he needs to be crashing forward and landing his big punches. But if he's doing it intelligently, he's far more dangerous than if he's doing it recklessly. And I, I still I think Adesanya can still do it. He just needs to use his slick movement and he, and uh, you know head movement defense in the first round to make Costa you know miss his shots. The, the more punches he misses, the more tired he gets, and the easier he's going to be to to pick off uh, you know at range for Adesanya. And I think, you know, the, the version of Adesanya that faced Gastelum compared to the, the version that faced Whitaker were very different. We'd already seen developments in his game which are going to be useful against Paulo Costa. Because for as good as he is, I believe Paulo Costa is just as skilled, just as talented, and as powerful as any guys that I've seen. I mean, this guy looks like a heavyweight fighting at 185 pounds. I don't know how he makes weight. Mm. I was talking to his uh, one of his coaches, Eric Albaracin, right? And they were talking about a guy going in to be one of his training partners, a kickboxer I used to use. And I was like, yeah, I was like, he's tough. I was like, he goes good because Paulo needs so many guys because a week and a half in, he breaks and he has to replace the training partners. He goes through you and then give me the next guy. Show up, skinny boy. Let's fight. I'm ready. Put these hands on your face, mother 
I've heard Paulo say I want to beat Adesanya. I've heard Adesanya say I'm going to beat Paulo. It is going to be a battle with two guys who are not going to quit. I, I predict that's fight of the year. Fight of the year.